Hey, just want to give you guys a heads up. This is, video is going to start out a little bit slow. I'm going to be telling some stories and explaining some things. But stay tuned. Watch the entire thing. There's some really cool footage in this. I put a lot of work into this video. I'm super proud of it. And I guarantee you, if you watch it till the end, you're really going to enjoy what you have to see. So I know a bunch of you guys have been wondering, what does the mink man want with a Malinois? And what does he plan on doing with it? I have to say that's a pretty valid question. What would I want with a dog that's traditionally used as a police dog? Well, to answer that question, I would have to go back about a year ago when I lost my good mink fang. About a year ago, I was walking down a bike trail with my mink fang, and a bike come whizzing around the corner and surprised us both. I lost my grip on the leash, and fang shot off into the bushes, and she was way too scared to respond to my calls. And unfortunately, in one foul swoop, I lost a mink who I both dearly loved and who I'd put several years of hard work into training. One of the many jobs my dog Onza had was to help me locate a lost mink. Onza was one eighth English pointer and had a useful nose, but she really wasn't the best. She could locate prey or a lost mink when the trail was simple and the scent she was following was good and strong, but the moment things got difficult, she was no longer any help. That fact was made especially apparent that day we lost Fang. Onso was already pretty tired from spending the morning hunting chipmunks, so when I went and asked her to find Fang for me, she really was less than enthusiastic. She was a little bit hot, a little bit tired, and didn't want to push her way through the thick weeds to find that lost mink. That was really frustrating for me because Onso let me down at the time I needed her the most. But I can't blame her, she really wasn't bred for the job. I decided that day I needed to get a dog who was bred for the job at hand, the specific job of finding a mink. I wanted this dog to specifically excel at looking for lost mink, but I also wanted it to help out Onza in the other areas she was good at. Mink are really good at escaping cages, and of course you lose track of them from time to time while out hunting. Relying on a tracking device placed on the mink itself while hunting is really only semi-useful. The device would restrict the mink's movement underground, and most of the time you don't even lose your mink while hunting anyway. You typically lose your mink when you're least expecting it. Like when your mink sneaks out of its cage at night, or when you just so happen to lose your mink while it's still on the leash like Fang. I still don't know how that happened. Now if you keep mink for very long, I don't care how careful you are, eventually you're going to lose a mink. Now I don't necessarily permanently lose a mink, but you're going to at least lose track of it for a day or two. They're far too good at escaping or sneaking away without you noticing for that not to happen. Now when I lose a mink, it's typically pretty temporary. I just lose track of it for a day or two or sometimes more. And usually they either make their way back home or I'm able to catch them again with a live trap. One thing about working with mink is you gotta get pretty good at finding a lost mink because eventually you're gonna lose one, typically multiple times. But if you're good, you can trap it, or sometimes with a good hunting mink, they'll find their way home again. My first hunting mink, Missy, actually died from old age at seven years old, and I lost that silly mink well over a dozen times in her lifetime. She was lost for as little as one day, up to nine days, and one time I actually lost her for almost a month before I finally found her again. Now just like most good hunting mink, each time I lost Missy, I was able to get her back again. Usually she found her way home, but a lot of times I had to go out and find her. Now, it isn't just people who hunt with mink that lose track of their mink. I know people who, for fear of losing their mink, never let them see the light of day. They just lock them in their house. Even then, mink will find an open window, or find a heater vent or something they can crawl through, or just straight up drill a hole through the wall and escape. So even people who lock their mink inside the house are not immune to losing their mink. Unfortunately for the pet people who never let their mink outside, if their mink finally does escape, they're not likely to ever see it again. Unlike my hunting mink who are, you know, accustomed to being outside and know their way home, a mink who's been locked in the house its whole life is very unlikely to be recovered. Though losing a mink is almost guaranteed to eventually happen, it really doesn't happen very often. So having a dog whose specific job is only looking for lost mink is really pretty silly. That poor dog is going to sit around for months, maybe even years, before he gets put to good use. So the last thing I wanted was an ultra specialized dog whose only job was looking for lost mink. I wanted a dog who could also perform other jobs too. I wanted a versatile dog who could hunt like Onza, alongside Onza, and be her hunting companion. 
Now, as many of you know, I hunt a variety of animals in various different hunting conditions. Some animals we hunt live in dry, rocky deserts and run fast like rabbits. Others live in and around water and are aggressive fighters like raccoons. And most of the hunting I do involves mink, and so the dog I need has to be 100% safe around the mink, even while in the heat of the moment while hunting. So I don't need a dog who can specialize in just hunting one or two animals. It needs to be one who could be a jack of all trades, hunting a wide range of animals in a variety of environments. In addition to hunting, I also wanted a dog who could help protect my family and my mink. One of my fears is as my YouTube channel grows that someone might seek me out to either do harm to my animals or my family. And so I really want a dog who could both protect my mink and my wife and little girls if I'm not around. Years ago, my wife and I read Elizabeth Smart's story and it has haunted me ever since. Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped out of her bedroom just down the hall from her sleeping parents. She was taken away into the mountains for several years where she was made a sex slave for a deranged old man. This happened in a peaceful, quiet little Utah neighborhood not too far from where we live now. She was literally kidnapped right from under her parents' noses. The guy was a professional thief, so the way he broke into the house, no security system would have prevented it. Being a more careful parent couldn't have prevented it. Having a gun wouldn't have prevented it. But if they would have owned the right dog, I doubt that deranged old man would have even attempted to kidnap her, let alone succeeded. Now don't get me wrong, Ulta was a great dog, but one thing she wasn't was a protector or a watchdog. She never even confronted a human regardless of the situation, and she was such a sound sleeper, I'll bet someone could sneak in and out of the house without her even waking. And so I was in search of a dog who would not only work alongside Onsa and her strengths, but more importantly, fill in where Onsa had weaknesses. And so for many, many months after losing Fang, I searched diligently and interviewed various dogmen to try and find just the right dog to fulfill that purpose. And so I was in search of a dog with a good nose and a strong desire to follow it. A dog who is quick and athletic enough to catch fast moving prey and gritty enough to fight toothy aggressive prey. A dog who could be trained well enough to be trusted around my mink and a dog who would protect my family and mink from intruders. Some dogs I looked at would make ideal protectors, but far from ideal hunting dogs. Some dogs had amazing tracking abilities, but were useless for protection and weren't quick enough to catch even slow game. After extensive research and interviews, I finally decided I was going to get either a Belgian Malinois or a Dutch Shepherd. I didn't really care which. When it comes to working dogs, Dutch Shepherds and Malinois are pretty much the same thing, just the different colors. Now, having said that, there are plenty of show dog people who would argue that they're two separate breeds, yada, yada, yada. But there's plenty of other people who argue they're the exact same thing, and they even actively breed the two colors together. In fact, the breeder I decided to get my puppy from is just like me. He doesn't care what color a dog is. He cares about how well it works. End of story. So he has both the brindled Dutch Shepherds and the fawn Malinois coming out, out of the same litter. There are several reasons I decided to get a Malinois. Like I mentioned earlier, the first job this new dog will have will be for locating lost mink. Malinois are bred to be multi-purpose police and military dogs as well as search and rescue dogs. They are selectively bred for their ability to trail a suspect or lost person as well as locate drugs or explosives. Though Malinois may not have the best nose in the dog world, they do have a very useful one. Malinois are very quick and exceptionally athletic dogs. They have been bred to be quick and nimble enough to pursue a suspect over pretty much any obstacle. This speed and athletic ability has an obvious advantage when hunting across various terrains and habitats. Though they may be fast runners when compared to an average dog, a Malinois isn't going to match the speed of a sighthound, so they're far from the fastest dog out there. Malinois are also very intelligent and extremely trainable. Just like most other members of the herding dog family, their high intelligence and strong desire to please makes them excel at obedience and learning new tasks. One of the tasks that a Malinois has been more carefully selected for is physically protecting their owners from attack, 
as well as capturing a fleeing suspect. It takes a lot of guts to take down a grown man head on, and a dog also needs a reasonable amount of pain tolerance along with that confidence, because kicking and punching is going to be most people's reaction to being grabbed by a dog. A dog who lacks in confidence or pain tolerance just isn't going to cut it as a military or police dog. In my last video, I read a fair number of negative comments about the way the Malinois were being handled by the breeder I have selected. Accusations of abuse and negativity were being thrown around here and there. The cold hard truth is, you can't produce dogs who are mentally or physically tough enough to take a man in the heat of battle without testing to see what the dogs are made of. This isn't some fun little game these dogs are being bred for. Police officers and soldiers are putting their lives on the line to keep us safe, and the dogs who help them must do the same. They must be able to excel at work in tough and difficult situations because if these dogs don't do their job, then somebody's daddy might not be coming home that night. These dogs must be tested hard to ensure they have the right genetics to produce the kind of dogs that a police officer or soldier can trust their lives with. People love to cry and complain, but if it was their dad or their brother or their husband whose life was on the line, then they would want to make sure that dog standing by his side is there through the toughest of situations. But of course, yeah, if it's someone else's dad or brother or husband, who cares, right? You don't know them. So what about hunting? Are Malinois and Dutch Shepherds very good at hunting? After all, that's you know not exactly something they're bred to do. Well, truth of the matter is not very many people hunt with Malinois. But I did find a few people here and there who did, and every one of them raved about their hunting abilities. The various people I talked to used the Malinois to hunt everything from big dangerous game like feral hogs, deer, and boars, to fast running game like rabbits and foxes, and also mean fighting animals like raccoons. They pretty much all agreed that a Malinois couldn't compare to a specialized hunting dog when it came to their particular specialty, but they were a very versatile hunter that could hunt a wide range of animals in a wide range of situations. So if Malinois and Dutch Shepherds have so much potential as hunting dogs like these people have claimed, why is it not very many hunters use them? Well, my assumption is it's the exact same reason not very many people should keep a Malinois as a pet. Malinois are hardcore working dogs and must be worked on a daily basis. A Malinois or Dutch Shepherd who sits around very long quickly becomes incredibly destructive and very annoying. Incessant barking, constant chewing, digging up the yard, and all sorts of bad habits are going to be a constant battle if you own a Malinois. Properly owning a Malinois is more like a time-consuming hobby than owning a pet. Most hunters only hunt during certain times of the year, or maybe just on weekends. Very, very few hunters are as hardcore as me, literally going out anywhere from 6 to 12 times a week. For me, hunting and doing pest control with my mink is a lifestyle, and literally a part-time job, not just something I do on weekends. This is the type of dedication and time commitment required to properly own a Malinois. Their extreme high energy and intelligence requires this type of dedication, or else both you and the dog will be incredibly miserable. So obviously our original plans hit a roadblock. A very unfortunate event, just a month before planning on getting our Malinois, we lost good old Onsa. Absolutely heartbreaking, but um, you know, I've got to continue. This is more than just a little fun hobby for me. Um, I've got jobs that need to be done and clients that are waiting for me. And so I got a couple dogs to help try and fill the gap while we wait on this Malinois to grow up. We got good little Boss and skinny little Lily. And the hope is that within a couple months they'll be able to start doing some ratting and do some of the jobs that Onsa did. I have no idea how many jobs they'll be able to fill that Onsa was able to accomplish. But hopefully they'll be able to do a couple of them. And this Malinois, the hope is she could fill in the gaps where these dogs, you know, aren't as, as good at hunting. So in just a couple months, we're going to be getting the little Malinois. Our original plan was actually to have it by now. But I need some more time to work on these dogs and get them accustomed to everything. So we're waiting on getting the Malinois uh, for another couple months. It'll be about the middle to end of October is when we'll be getting our little Malpup. So stay tuned. I'll show you lots on the training of these guys. 
And uh, obviously when we get the Malinois puppy, we'll be doing videos on her as well. And that just shows, you know, that's when you're likely to lose a mink is when 